Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about integrating this rational function. This is a rational function and its denominator has already been factored. And so what we need to do is that we need to rewrite this rational function as a sum or difference of two rational functions or more so that we can integrate each partial fraction directly. And so the way that we do this is called the partial fraction decomposition. So this process uh, requires us to rewrite this function so that it will be a sum of um, two or more um, functions that are just simple rational functions. Okay, so let's get started. We are going to start by writing down the, um, the rewriting this function, right? So we are not going to worry about the integration at this point. We are just going to focus on talking about how to deal with this function here. So first, we are going to start by, let me see. So we are going to start by rewriting it as phi minus x. Oh, okay. Phi minus x over here. And then we have x minus 2, right? x minus 2, and then uh, 3 minus x. And so to decompose this function, we are going to be getting capital A, okay? And then we have the denominator, which is x minus 2, and then plus capital B. And then in the denominator, we have the other factor in the denominator, which is 3 minus x. Okay, and then you may say, what is A, what is B? A and B are just two constants that are unknown for now because um, we are really just saying that, okay, so if we add this fraction to the second fraction, when we add them together, we are going to be getting this integrand. And so what we need to do now is to figure out what A is, what B is, so that the two sides of the equation are equal, okay? So how do we do it? First, we know that when we're adding two fractions, we need the common denominator. And so in this case, the LCD is exactly the same as you can see on the left-hand side of the equation. So what we are going to do here is to just try to get both fractions into the same denominator, which is the same denominator as the fraction on the left side of the equation. Okay, so what are we doing here? We are going to we are going to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by something. Okay. Now what about the left hand side? Left hand side we can just leave the fraction for now. So just leave it. So just, just leave it there. Okay, so we have x minus 2 and then 3 minus x. Now, here, what we are going to do is that we are going to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by whatever that's missing, okay? Whatever that's missing. Um, what are we missing here? We already have the x minus 2, so all we need to do is to multiply the, the top and the bottom by 3 minus x. Right, so that now our new denominator is having the same denominator as the fraction on the left side. Okay. And then now what happens is that if you multiply something at the bottom, you also need to multiply by the same thing at the top so that you're not changing the original fraction. So we also need to multiply by three minus X at the top. Okay, continue doing the same thing right here for the second fraction. So we have the B, we have the three minus X right here. And then as you can see here, um, we already have the three minus X. So all we need is to multiply by the x minus 2, top and the bottom. And so x minus 2, and then x minus 2. And so we are basically multiplying by 1, so we are not changing the problem. Okay. So now um, those two fractions have the same denominator. We can add them together. Okay. So let's add them together. This side, we are just going to just keep it. Just copy, that's simple. Okay, now the right-hand side. Um, just one single fraction, just one single fraction here. 
denominator would just be x minus 2 and then 3 minus x. Okay, now um, you can see that we can actually distribute the um, the a to the 3 and then the a to the negative x and then the b to the x and then the b to the negative 2, right? So we can distribute that. But for now, I'm just going to write it. So we get a times what? 3 minus x plus b times x minus 2. Okay, so far so good. Now, we have two fractions that are equal to each other and because their denominators are the same, so then we can also say that um, as long as both sides are defined, then the numerators must also be equal. So in this case, we can actually say that 5 minus x is equal to a times 3 minus, okay, so the 3 looks too bad. So 3 minus x plus b times x minus 2. Okay, so now we need to focus on solving this equation so that we can have the a and the b. Now to find a and b, there are actually two ways to do it. I'm going to show you both ways for this example here. And then for later examples, when we're uh, integrating more complicated rational functions, what I'm going to do is to use a combination of both to, to find the, uh, the coefficients, whichever ones that are easier to, to use, then I would use that one. But for now, I'm going to show both ways to do it. So um, first approach, first approach. Let's do it here. So we can say that that's approach one. Okay, so how do we do this? We can actually just match the coefficients, right? We do get a polynomial on this side, we, and we have another polynomial on this side, we can actually, and we are saying that they're equal, so we can actually match the coefficients. So let me put, let me rewrite this in descending order. So we are in terms of degree, right? So we have um, negative x plus five. Okay, so I move the negative x to the front, and then I put the five at the back, okay, in descending order. And then here, I'm going to start distributing the a and the b to the stuff inside the parentheses. So we are going to be getting 3a minus ax, okay, then plus bx minus 2b. And then now you can see that there are some x terms, there are some constant terms, right, because a and b are both constants. So what we can do is to combine like terms. So we have negative x plus 5 equals, now combine like terms, we have negative a plus b x and then plus 3a minus 2b. Okay, now, you see what's going on here? What is the coefficient of this x right here? It's negative 1, right? As you can see, that's negative 1. And then on the right hand side, there was also a coefficient for the x, which is negative a plus b. So we have the negative a plus b right here. Okay, now what is the constant term? The constant term is actually uh, the constant term is actually the positive five. Okay, now what about the constant term on the right hand side? The right hand side is having a constant term of three a minus two b. Okay, so now all we need to do is to match those coefficients or the constant terms. It's really because we are saying that this polynomial is equal to that polynomial. So all we need to do is to match their coefficients. So right now we actually have a system of two equations. One of them is the green one, right? The green one is actually, what is that? That's going to be negative a plus b. So we get negative a plus b is equal to what is the what is the coefficient here is negative one so we get negative one right here now the other equation the other equation is 3a minus 2b okay 3a minus 2b equals what is that constant term that's five right so we have that 
Now, all we need to do is to solve this system of two equations with two unknowns, and then we are going to get a solution. Um, all we need to do, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this one. This one is really just basic algebra here. I can multiply the first equation by two, which will give me negative two a plus two b equals negative two. And then the uh, second equation, you don't even need to do anything, right? Because we are just matching those coefficients and they have opposite signs, right? If we add them together, then we are going to be getting, um, so together we are actually getting A equals, what is that? That's going to be three, right? Because if you add the two equations together, three A minus two A, we get A. Five minus two, we get three. And then those got canceled. Okay, so once you get the A to be three, you can plug it back into one of the equations, whichever one is easier to solve for b, right? If you plug this a back in here, you are going to get negative three plus b equals negative one, right? So we have negative three plus b equals negative one. And then if you're solving for b right here, right? If you're solving for b, then that's going to be just two. Okay, so b is equal to two. So that's approach one for finding the a and the b. And this is the traditional approach for doing that. And then there was actually, sometimes it may be faster. This is, there is a faster approach for this one, which is what I'm going to be showing right here. Okay, so let's look at uh, the second way of doing this. Um, how do we do this? We come back to this equation right here. I would say that it will be a good idea to just copy it once so that it's easier for us to work with, but you don't have to, right? As you're solving the problem because you're not going to do it both ways. So you can just continue from once you get to this step, you can continue with this approach. Okay. So we have this now the two sides must be equal no matter what x is equal to, right? So what we can do right now is that we can substitute some values for x so that we do not have x as an unknown right here. And then um, it may give us the value for a and b, especially if you choose specific x values that will cause one of the a or b to disappear. For example, if I choose x to be three, then you can see that if I plug the three in here, three minus three, we get zero. So the A will disappear in the equation. So let's try that and see what's going on. So here we are going to do let X be three. Okay. So let X be three. Okay. So the trick here is that we want to choose an X value that will make either the A turn zero or the B turn zero. Okay, so I chose three because I want the A turn to disappear. So now if I plug the three in here, then I'm going to get, then what am I getting? We have five minus, now plug the three in there, right? So plug the three into the X equals, now this turn will disappear because you plug the three in here, three minus three gets zero, right? Now you're still having the B turn. So we have the B here and then three minus two. Okay, so as you can see here, this equation is super easy to solve, right? So you can get the B already, the B is equal to, now three minus two, that's one, one times B is just B, and then five minus three, we, get, we just get the two, so we get B equals two. See that that's actually getting the same answer as the approach one, right? Now, all we need to do is to pick another X value to find A, and the ideal number that we pick would be two in this case, because that will make the B turn disappear. So let's do that. So we do that, then we are gonna get the two here. And then, then what happens? Then the equation becomes um, five minus two equals, and then now the A is three minus the, um, the two. And that's simple, okay? And then now we can actually find a. Uh, three minus two, again, it's just making the coefficient of a to be one. So we get a equals five minus two, that's three. So we get a equals three. And then we're getting the same answer.
which way do you like better? I right? just pick the the way to do it. Um, I would say that for the more complicated problems, um, it would be a good idea to use a combination of both to do this. But for this particular problem here, I think method two, right? It's a lot faster. Okay, so now we figure out A and B, we can go back to the original problem and then finish with the integration. So going back to the problem, we actually turn this into a sum of two partial fractions, right? So now we can put the A and the B in there and then we can integrate this. So what are we getting here? We are getting, what is the A? A is three, so we get three over X minus two. Plus, now the B is the, what, the two. And then three minus X. So basically we're integrating this one now, not the original one anymore, right? And that would actually be easy to integrate. So what are we getting here? We have, um, we can separate the two integrals into, uh, the integral into two, right? So we have, three times the integral of one over x minus two plus the two. And then as you can see, we can actually move the constant outside, right? So we can have, can have um, the one at the top and then you have three minus x in the denominator. Okay. So, just do the integration now. We have what three times ln of absolute value of x minus two. That's the nt derivative for one over x minus two because that's a linear expression at the bottom. Same thing here. We can we are also going to be getting an ln function with the absolute value. So we get plus two times. Now leave some space right here. I'll explain in a minute what's going on. Three minus x right here. Um, why did I ask you to leave some space right here? Let's look at this. This is three minus X. What is the coefficient of X? It's negative one. So there was a chain rule involved in here when you differentiate that function because you need to multiply by negative one. But then we do not really have that negative one here. So we got to reverse the chain rule. So we, we got to multiply by, we're going to multiply by negative one here to reverse that chain rule. Okay, and then plus C. And finally, of course, we can clean up the answer. I think I need more space, right? So let me move up that expression a little bit. And then my final answer is going to look like this. Three times ln of absolute value of x minus two minus two times ln of three minus x, and then plus the constant C. And then we are finished with the problem. And of course, if you want to move the three as an exponent for the X minus two, and then the two as an exponent for the three minus X, we can also combine the loss into a single law function, but we are not gonna do that here. That's just basic algebra work. Is that okay? So that's how you do this kind of problem. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel and share my videos to others. It will give me support to make more videos. If you have questions or have a topic that you want me to talk about, please leave me a comment. Thank you for watching this video.